Hey guys, Jim Bowers, Demon Seed, back at you here on the YouTube network, back with an update on the 3DR Iris Plus. There are some things I've found out that you need to know. If you're thinking about buying an Iris Plus, the first thing you have to consider is the tablet. If you've already got a tablet, the first thing you wanna check is does it have GPS? Now the tablet that I bought for my Iris Plus, I bought a cheapo for like uh, 89 bucks on eBay, but I didn't look to see that it had GPS. It did have Wi-Fi, so when I was at home, I could use my Droid Planner and all my Google Earth Maps came up. But as soon as I took off down to Sacramento or 40 miles away where there was no Wi-Fi signal, all I was getting was the map that was stored from when I was at home. So it was a cached map in the system. So it was very out of focus, it wouldn't refresh, it was just absolutely terrible, and you're getting approximations with your waypoints because the map isn't up to date. So 3DR, if you look on their website, I should have, they recommend you get a Nexus 7 inch tablet. The Nexus 7 2012 uh, edition is all you need. It's got GPS on it and it will allow you to set your waypoints and get a fresh map when you're out in the field. You can use non-proprietary batteries in the Iris Plus. It'll take them. So any three cell LiPo 11.5 volt 30C, 20C battery will work. It's not going to hurt the Iris. I'm sure they recommend you use only their battery, but I have flown the Phantom 2200 battery in the Iris and I didn't do any damage to it. So I don't know if you want to try it, but it worked for me. But the Zippy won't fit. The Zippy 2800, which I was kind of hoping because I've got about 10 of them, I was hoping this would fit in the Iris, but it's a little bit too fat. So the Zippy 2800 is out. The Phantom 2200 will get you about four or five minutes of flight time. At least it did on the last time I tried it. Let's try it again. Here's another thing that I did to my radio. Online, I ordered two things. One, I ordered the backlight. There's an LCD backlight that you can install. They're about 15 bucks, and you put it in behind the existing uh, monitor here, and it gives you much brighter contrast on your radio. All right, the next thing I found out, the little icons that are in Droid Planner. On the top right hand side, these were kind of puzzling me and so I had to ask around on a lot of forums. But the one that looks like a bullseye, I couldn't figure out why if I was 40 miles away, why was there a blue dot on my house back in Colfax? And I didn't want my iris accidentally taking off and flying back toward that blue dot. Well, it turns out that that little bullseye is that blue dot on your map. That blue dot is your tablet. So once you get a tablet that's got GPS on it, you won't have that issue and that blue dot or your tablet will move to your current location. The next icon down looks like an arrow. It's just an arrow. Look at that like an aircraft because that's what it is. It's your Iris Plus. If you tap that, your Google Earth map will zero in on your Iris Plus, so it'll put your Iris right in the center of the map. So no matter where your map is, if you're way out in South Africa on your map, just tap the little arrow aircraft and it will zoom back to your current location or wherever you're powered up. And then the bottom icon is a compass. It will reorient your map if you've got it all turned around, spun around, etc. On the bottom left hand side is the trash can. If you've got a whole bunch of waypoints in there and you're just practicing and you wanna uh, just put a bunch of waypoints in and then delete them or whatever, you don't have to push the trash can and then tap each waypoint to get rid of it. Just hold your finger down on the trash can. Just press and hold. And you'll get a little box up that says, do you wanna delete all your waypoints? Click okay and your entire mission disappears. It makes it a lot quicker to get rid of all the crap that you've just created. 
Now, once you have deleted everything and there's no waypoints down on the bottom, you have no green flags that are down on the bottom of the screen, send that mission to the iris. And what you're doing is you're zeroing it out. You're telling it there is no mission. Whenever you get ready to fly, always press the three dots that are in the top right hand corner of Droid Planner and load mission. And what that's doing is it's downloading whatever's in the iris back to your tablet. So if there's some erroneous mission to frickin' Shingle Springs, California, Google it, then it'll show up on your tablet. If it's the mission you wanna fly, then great, you're in good shape. If it's not the mission you wanna fly, trash it, recreate your mission, and then hit the three dots again in the top right hand corner and click on send mission. And it'll send it back up to the iris, the iris will store it, and your tablet will say mission saved to droid, drone or whatever. I want to explain briefly the difference between a normal waypoint mission and using a spline in your waypoint mission. If you use a normal waypoint, the aircraft is going to travel directly in a straight line from one waypoint to the next. It'll only pause long enough to get there and if you set it up to pause any longer. If you use a spline waypoint, the aircraft will travel in an arc so that it can pass through one waypoint and get to the next on as straight a line as possible, but non-stop through the entire course. All right, we put a flight camera on the Iris. We're gonna do an FPV mission. I put a flight camera on it, a 5.8 gigahertz immersion 600 milliwatt video transmitter on it, and we are gonna fly this puppy around here and check out what kind of video we can get and how smooth it is with the Iris Plus. Let's give it a go! Normally, you can take off with all of your switches in the up position. And then your standard loiter and auto switch is either in the standard or the loiter mode. It's okay to take off in either. If you're a beginner and a novice flying the Iris Plus, you can very easily fly it in the loiter mode. Because remember, loiter is GPS. That means you have GPS lock, GPS auto leveling, GPS positioning with the aircraft. So we're gonna take off in loiter mode here. We're gonna use the ground station monitor to fly an FPV mission. One thing I did find, figure out about the Iris Plus, this baby locks into GPS about five times faster than a Phantom. It really does. I've got eight satellites already, and it's only been sitting here for 30 seconds. Your radio on the Iris Plus will give you all of your flight data. All you've got to do on the lower left-hand side of your radio is a circular button. Press the down button and hold it, and it'll bring up all of your current flight data, your altitude, your speed, your distance from home, your battery life, what position this switch is in. Right now I'm in loiter mode, so it tells me that. How many satellites I've got, what my current battery voltage is, and what maw I've consumed so far. That was bad. I just knocked over the damn camera and I think it's okay. GoPro. Throttle down and to the right. <laughs> Iris is armed and we take off. <laughs> See, and that's, that's the thing about flying with a ground station is you can maintain line of sight with your aircraft. And remember, that's one of the things that the FAA wants you to do, is maintain line of sight with your aircraft at all times. So I'm using my monitor just as a visual reference for what I'm capturing on film. So you can see what kind of video we're getting. I've got the camera pitched 
down just a little bit. And this is just a local neighborhood and an industrial area. But you can see how nice and uh, smooth the video is. And we're gonna fly it back here because I'm getting low on battery because I let the iris sit here while I was doing all of this filming. And we're down to 10.8 volts. And you always wanna land your iris when you're at about 10.7. I'm gonna put another battery in it. That's one of the nice things about the iris. You don't have to use you know, while it's not a bad idea to use the 5100 battery that comes with the Iris, there we go. You can see how absolutely rock solid stable the Iris Plus is. When you're in the loiter mode and you're just letting it sit there, that sucker doesn't budge one inch. It is absolutely GPS perfect. I'm very, very impressed. last modification I have for you on the Iris Plus is this bracket right here. This bracket that holds your LCD monitor on, you can get it on eBay for about 15 bucks. Just search Turnigine 9X LCD monitor bracket. All right, so if you're thinking about pulling the trigger and buying your own drone, then you got to give Peter a call over at acesdeals.com. Biz. He's the only guy I recommend because he's a good old boy from New York City and he'll take good care of you. He's also a repair facility. So when you take your drone and drive it straight into the side of a phone pole, he'll be there to help you get it fixed. Okay? That's important. So in the month of November, we're going to give away a Nano 3D drone to anybody who buys a UAV from acesdeals.biz. Just gonna throw it in so you can use the Nano 3D to learn how to fly before you lift your flabby ass off the ground. Don't risk a $700 to $1,500 drone in the air if you're a novice newbie rookie. You need to learn how to fly it first. There's a damn train out there. That's my Billy Bob. <laughs> so anyway, you guys have a great afternoon. Demon Seed, right here. Keep it on the top side. I'm out. <laughs>